Hey Disney fans, my name is Haley. Welcome back to the Disney Cupcake Channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the first day of cast member previews at Walt Disney World and what you should know before heading out to Magic Kingdom. Now a couple things off the bat. Currently, Walt Disney World is selling tickets for 2021, so if you're looking to plan a trip, that is the only time that you can currently purchase tickets for. You can no longer purchase tickets for 2020 as of the filming of this video. Currently, only annual pass holders and current ticket holders are able to get a reservation to enter the theme parks. Now something that I haven't shared is I actually planned a trip for the end of July. I was going to go down to the parks for a day and experience the COVID version of the theme parks, but with cases rising, we decided to cancel that little trip. So I will not be going now at the end of July, although looking at some of the stuff Disney is doing, it does look pretty promising. But if you are planning to go to Walt Disney World for the first time this year, I would not recommend it. I don't think it is the same. I don't know if it'd even be worth the price. Disney, if you've never been or if you are currently planning a trip, there's a lot of things that go into it. There are so many things you need to know before you go and adding all of the new rules and guidelines on top of that, I just don't think it would make your first trip as fun and it, it might not be worth the price. That is just my personal opinion, but I wanted to throw that out there if you are thinking about going to Walt Disney World in 2020. But another thing to add, if you do have tickets and you are looking to head to Disney this year, you can now get reservations for select experiences and dining in the parks if you have a reservation and tickets for 2020. One last thing here I wanted to add. All of the sales on my Teespring merch shop will have 15% of the sale donated to Make-A-Wish for the month of July. So if you guys would like to check out any of the Disney Cupcake merch, it is linked down below. I also have this really fun Parks Limited Edition design only available through the end of August. So make sure to check that out linked down below. And please subscribe if you have not already done so. It really helps me out. Now I did want to give a shout out to WDWNT. That is where I got most of this information from along with some other bloggers and things and I will have all of their accounts linked down below if you guys would like to check them out and credit to them for these pictures as well. Now on July 7th 2020 both Animal Kingdom and Magic Kingdom opened for their cast previews. Today I'm just going to be talking about Magic Kingdom and first we're going to start off at the Ticket and Transportation Center or the TTC. Now currently at the TTC there are no trams running from your car to the area where you would board the monorail, the boat, or the buses. When you get to the TTC they have the temperature screening tents and something really interesting, they also have vending machines with masks in them in case you forgot or in case your mask does not properly fit the guidelines. Now when going through security you have to put anything in your pockets like phones and things inside of these clear plastic bags provided and then you will give those clear plastic bags to security to help people like avoid touching all your things and putting items into bins with other people's stuff. It just helps keep everything a lot more clean. All of the cast members that you have to interact with have like double face mask and shield just to help with extra protection. Now on the cast member preview day the buses to the Magic Kingdom were not running but it is hard to know if they'll be running for the opening of Magic Kingdom on Saturday July 11th. And lastly for the TTC here is a look at the monorail. It looks like they are doing one group per cabin and they also added some dividers. Now heading into the Magic Kingdom, the Magic Kingdom along with all of the other Disney parks are going to have what they call relaxation zones where you are able to take your mask off when you are not eating. So this is the only other time that you can take your mask off when you are not eating. If you are looking for these relaxation zones, you will find one in the Tomorrowland Terrace, which is an indoor location. Now they have a bunch of tables in there and you have to be 10 feet apart from the other parties. The second relaxation zone is in Pete's Silly Sideshow and that is another indoor location. And the third and final location is the Golden Oak Outpost and that is an outdoor location. 
And I almost forgot to mention, when you enter Magic Kingdom, you will see the beautifully painted castle. It is now rose gold with accents of like smaller gold details and a nice royal blue. And that is in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Walt Disney World Resort in 2021. Now as far as eating goes, the quick service locations have added plexiglass where you would normally order your food and mobile ordering is highly recommended and I have used mobile ordering before and I would even recommend it if these new guidelines weren't in place. Also in the quick service locations, the toppings bar are still open where you'll get your ketchup and your mustard and all of those things but they are currently the little pre-packaged packets and not the like everyone uses the same dispensers kind of thing. As far as merchandise goes, there are no package pickups or delivery to your resort hotel. Kind of going along with the merchandise, if you are a fan of Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, it is a card game that you can play around the park, it is currently still open. Now for attractions. There are hand sanitizer locations as you enter the attraction and as you get off the attraction. If you have ridden the Winnie the Pooh attraction, as you enter the queue, you will see all these really fun interactive elements. Unfortunately, they are not open at this time and they are currently roped off. Now as far as shows, Mickey's Philhar Magic is currently still showing in Fantasyland and guests have to personally pick up their 3D glasses and cast members do not hand them to you anymore. Also inside of the show they are not spraying water or the different scents just to help keep things from spreading around the room and they are also seating every other row for different shows like Philhar Magic and Carousel Progress and Tiki Room. Over at the Haunted Mansion, they are currently not using the stretching room and it is currently just being used as additional queue space to help space people out. Now the biggest attraction change is for the Jungle Cruise. They added this clear plexiglass in between each group and there is currently no middle seating inside of the boat. Now something that was going around a lot whenever the parks were kind of brainstorming their reopening is if they were going to wipe off the attraction vehicles between each ride. During the cast member previews, Disney was not doing that, so I believe that is how it will also be once the parks reopen. From what I've seen, Disney kind of has like a method to it that every so many rides they will wipe down everything, but I haven't really heard too much about it, but with the hand sanitizer stations at the beginning of the end, you will be able to properly sanitize your hands whenever you'd like to. Now Disney is still actively cleaning. I did want to make that clear. I did see a lot of pictures of different cast members cleaning off railings and different things as well. So it's not that they're not cleaning, they're just not cleaning after every single rider. Here you guys can see they also added plexiglass inside of the Seven Dwarves Mine Train queue and they also removed and roped off some of the interactive elements. Also, the plexiglass says do not touch on it. Another ride that I personally had questions about is Buzz Lightyear and that's a very like interactive touchy type ride. Pictures I've seen have shown the Buzz Lightyear animatronic completely covered up so I guess there's some sort of refurbishment going on there and again as you're entering the ride there's hand sanitizer, there's also hand sanitizer at the end of the ride but surprisingly you can still use the blasters and ride the attraction as normal. Something super exciting to see was how they were going to come up with these unique versions of character meet and greets. They had Buzz out at the Tomorrowland stage. I also saw Merida riding her horse through Frontierland and this fun little goofy type parade. I also saw Tinkerbell and the characters at the Main Street Station. There were a bunch of cool little meet and greets and pictures I saw throughout the day. The last attraction here I wanted to touch on is Splash Mountain. If you guys missed it, Splash Mountain is going to be rethemed into Princess and the Frog and if you guys would like any more information about that announcement I will have my video linked down below and at the end of the video. So a lot of people wanted to make sure they were able to go and ride Splash Mountain before the re-theme, which we currently do not have a date for. So since a lot of people were trying to get their rides in on Splash Mountain, as I mentioned, the wait was very long, the line was very long, although it did probably look longer than it was since people were spaced out, and a lot of people were just 
trying to get into the store area. Here are some pictures of the store being completely wiped out, the pins being gone, the pops, the t-shirts, the plush and everything. They actually had to close down the store in the middle of the day to completely restock it. So lots of Splash Mountain news going on there and I'm interested to see how long the line gets and how often they're gonna have to restock the store once the parks actually reopen to annual pass holders and people who already had tickets. Touching on Animal Kingdom for a moment, as you guys will see here, a lot of the attractions also added this plexiglass to their queues to help keep people spaced out, and I just think that's really interesting. It'll be interesting to see how long that sticks around and what of these rules and guidelines are actually going to stick once the parks reopen to more people. So a lot of the things I just mentioned at Magic Kingdom are the same for Animal Kingdom. The hand sanitizer, the stickers on the ground, the mobile ordering, all of those things basically remain the same for all of the other parks as well. That was just the first day of Casimir previews and that was just one day at Magic Kingdom. It's going to be interesting what's going to happen here in the future, what's going to stick around, what's going to be permanent, what's... What's going to happen? Let me know down below in the comments all of your thoughts. Are you heading out to Magic Kingdom for the opening or did you go to Animal Kingdom? I'd love to hear about your experiences and all of your thoughts down below in the comments. Don't forget to like this video if you guys would like to see a follow-up video to this, maybe talking about one of the other parks or sharing my reaction and thoughts to the opening. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already done so and remember to do what you love and do what makes you happy and I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.